Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So today I'm going to talk about pillar cut or reeded decanters. Um, some people call them pillar fluted, but apparently that's wrong. I'll show you why. But anyway, this is a pillar cut decanter. You can see it's got these pillars. I like pillar cut, I don't like reeded, just saying. Um, and then it, the actual pillars on this one go around the bottom and then it's got it on the stopper as well. So anyway, this is pillar cutting. I'll explain what this is. I will show you a couple of references to show you the period and what one book says about them. So let's get on and um, show you some glass and some books. So the first book I'm gonna show you is How to Identify English Drinking Glasses and Decanters. 1680 to 1830 by Douglas Ash. This is a lovely book. One of the first glass books I bought. And um, yeah, he says, reading consists of a circuit of vertically, vertical pilasters or semicircular section. They were formed by deep cutting vertical grooves and rounding the edges at the junction of the grooves to the original, the original surface laborious and he tells you that it doesn't go on for what does he say on the next page expensive blah 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 um introduced in the 1830s anyway didn't go on for that long but anyway he also calls it um some people he says some people call it somewhere he said some people call it uh Pillar fluting, which he thinks is wrong. I would agree with him. I like pillar cutting myself. I think they look like pillars all stacked together. Reading, nobody says that anymore. It sounds like the word reading, as in reading a book, um, as opposed to a bundle of reeds stacked together. But anyway, um, difficult to argue with Douglas Ash because he did actually write the book, as in the dictionary of a British antique glass. So yeah, I like pillar cutting. I think it sounds good. There's pillar molding, which is molded, but this is actually cut. That, that's what he's telling you. They cut a groove and then they round it out. And it's a difficult and expensive process. So it actually didn't very last very long. I have a reference with pictures that I can show you. Um, it'd be a familiar reference. So I will show you that, and it's got dates in it, which kind of agree with what I'm telling you. This book is The Decanter, Ancient to Modern by Andy McConnell. And yeah, so here we have, this is not modding, that's a slightly different pattern, I think, I'm not certain. But anyway, this is a pillar, not pillar, this is a pillar cut one. This is two, and there's one down the bottom here. So we've got number two and number three. And the dates he's got for number two is 1830 to 40. And the date he's got for number three is 1835. And for number 13, the date he's got here is 1840. So yeah, this type of cutting apparently was very expensive, very laborious and didn't last very long. So they're not that common. You do see them, but not that common. Um, yeah, so it would have been, when these were made, these were, would have been very expensive, flashy decanters. And they kind of look really nice. Um, the pillar cutting looks, I don't know how to say, it looks kind of jiggly when you turn it compared to pillar molding. I don't know how to describe that. I will do a separate video on pillar molded glass because I've got jugs and stuff as well for that. Um, but anyway, um, we're talking about the 1830s, potentially 1840s early there, but um, let's get on and I'll show you some glass. So I'm gonna start you out with some fairly standard pillar cut decanters. Um, they all have something slightly different about them. So we'll start with this one. It has a kind of a slightly 
pillar cut stopper. Can you see? Where basically they've done the same thing to the stopper that they've done to the body. Look at how refractive that is. And this is the thing that you get from pillar cutting. It has this refractiveness that's different. It feels different to the eye, I should say, and not physically. Um, it also has cushion cutting down the neck. Let me show you this. It's a bit dusty. I've had this one down the shed. But you can see that's cool. that is actually cutting. That is not molding at all. So they've cut this groove in and then polished it rounded. This will also be laborious. And they've done it underneath. This is the one that I showed you at the beginning. Um, yeah, so this would have been particularly expensive. Now this one it has one cushion here and you've got your some step cutting and you've got some panels there's no raw glass here it's all glass that's cut surfaces and you've got look let me show you with this one look at the effect that you get when you turn it yeah you don't get that effect with molded glass it has a certain rippliness I don't know how to describe that, but it's a very nice effect. And then they've drawn the pillars underneath. You can see the wear where it touches the table. Can you see just that triangle there? So yeah, this has got plenty of age. Weighs a ton. Would have been expensive because this would have been made whilst the tax glass tax was in place. So yeah, so this is a there's a piece, then we've got this one here. This is, I think this one's probably the best one, even though it's probably less pillar cutting in it as such. And these, again, you've got that same fantastic shimmery effect. This has got a star cut base. You can see where it sits on the table, just here got plenty of wear on it um, but this has got panels cut to the neck and then what they've done is they've taken the panels all the way up but then they've cut steps into them yeah Again, not a cheap process and then let me show you this stopper these two stoppers are very similar so got the kind of wear that you're looking for and they've got sort of pillars cut into the round edge and then you've got star cut top yeah so yeah I do really like this one it's this one seems to have a bit more present maybe it's the height I don't know slightly bigger but this seems to raise it up, give a bit more presence than the other two. These seem a bit more blobby. Maybe it's because of the cushion cutting, I don't know. But anyway, um, that's the first three I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what I something I now consider to be a bit of monstrosity um, for the wrong reasons. But let's move on. At first glance, this looks fine. I bought this off eBay. I think I paid hardly anything for it, like about a fiver. So I doubt the people I bought it from did what happened to this decanter because someone spent some money on it and had it restored. Only they've done a really bad thing. So this stopper doesn't originally go with this. So, yeah how perfect that is that's been done and what's worse this has been acid polished so I'm trying to click the edge there it doesn't really click it I can get just about get my thumb to make a noise going over the edge there I think I've got to find something else that should have an edge on it uh, yeah, and get this bullseye stopper here listen to this so that's a shallow angle, but I can still, 
Yeah. This is a similar sh shallow angle. Yeah. Because they've acid polished, they've actually taken the crisp edge off it. You can hardly get it to do it there, and that's a sharp angle. But on the top here, you can't do it because they've actually acid polished it. It looks like a new piece of glass. They've basically taken, ripped the surface off it with acid and they've done it to the whole bottle. Um, it looks kind of, can you see how it looks a bit strange? Yeah. Um, it still does have this shimmery, but underneath, there's no, if I can get it to the light to shine on the right bit, there's no wear on this piece here. Can you see? That should be completely grey and matte and it's it's smooth and polished. So the acid so they've probably acid polished it to clean the inside. And they have cleaned the inside, but they've also cleaned the outside. And there is it just feels really slick and funny like a new piece of glass not like something that's nearly 200 years old so yeah you can tell i am not approving of this at all um, it's a bad process if you have a decanter with a dodgy interior get the inside manually polished don't change the outside that should you know should show its age um, you can get chips taken off if you need to but yeah you know this has been it's absolutely I said look at that stopper peg it's absolutely like a new one and this is the wrong stopper anyway but beside that it you know the fact that I can and then you do something with a similar angle and it goes, shows you there's something wrong, different about the cutting on that one. And that's because it hasn't been, it's been polished like a modern piece of glass with acid, as opposed to this, which has been hand polished where you can feel the sharp edges. So yeah, that is something to look at. It's not just a pillar glass thing. I thought I had this one, I'll drag it out and show you and I might do a video about this just on its own but um, because it's something I hate so much but anyway um, let's move on and I'll show you some really nice pillared glass so I have these two these are the last two pieces I'm going to show you and um, I do have more down the shed but you know I could be here all night showing you bits of pillared glass I've got some smaller ones got cruets as well but this will do this will do um let me double check that i mean no no i don't have this hair so yeah this will do so we'll start with this one this is, looks a bit different to the others this is irish i think it's most likely to be waterford i have included it on my thing and what makes it really nice is this military sign here what you've got here symbol for Ireland Prince of Wales Fusiliers so this is from the Regency period um, there were a couple of regiments I don't know which one it relates to um, but yeah look at this pillar cutting running under the bottom it does have a condition issue it's got a big chip in the thing but yeah the person that's selling it had very little interest in it on eBay they were very careful to highlight this damage which really sucked its price so I got it for the amazing price of £10 for this piece of fantastic history um, they didn't know what this meant, this symbol. Um, the stopper is great as well. Look at this stopper. Matches the body. 
the pillar cutting I'm running over the top yeah this is a really nice yeah it's got a condition issue that's probably the point where it pew, hit that some drunken officer in the mess probably got us some sort of spanking for that um, breaking it because that wouldn't have been a cheap piece of glass in the mess um, so someone got into trouble for breaking that um, but it's mine now I'm very happy I the fact that I got it for so cheap I have no idea what it would have cost if it didn't have that break um, yeah but fantastic historic piece of glass um, from one of the two Irish Prince of Wales Fusiliers regiments so then I've got this one design wise this is my favorite um, because the pillar cutting is very unusual I have some doubts if this is English it might be French um, but I haven't seen anything otherwise Look at that, the way it's done is the way it thins out at the top here is fantastic. And they cut into it. Can you see? And it still has that same ripply effect that you get. And the pillars tuck underneath. And then what is really nice is the stopper. Is then made to match. Isn't that cool? Yeah, this is one of my of my all my decanters. So this is one of my favourite Regency ones. Um, yeah, I really like this, and that's why it's I think it's quite prominent on my website for Regency period. It's one of my favourites, even if it might not be English, but it's still fantastic. It's got a bit of cushion cutting here. Yeah. So that's the glass I have to show you. So saying that, I thought, oh, I just looked over my shoulder. I was about to put the glass back and I thought, oh yeah, let me show you this one here. So this is another Irish one. I know it's Irish. I bought it off eBay. Came from Enniskillen. Again, they had no idea what they were selling me, but it's intermediate. So it's got these panels cut like this and then it's got two pillars, panels, two pillars, panels, all the way around. So yeah, it's like a little hybrid pillar cut one. And then it's got panels, step cutting, faceted rings, and then the stoppers kind of got this. What I love about this one is that when you flip it over, it becomes a shamrock. Yeah. So, yeah, bought it from I think it was Enniskillen. Yeah, anyway, came off eBay from Ireland, from Northern Ireland. And, um, yeah, that that was a £15 decanter. Fantastic. Right, so there you have it. Apart from the fact that I forgot to show you something. I mentioned earlier on about pillar fluting, why it's wrong. And I didn't show you, so I'll just drag this decanter here out. So, fluting is concave and pillars are convex. So when you say pillar fluting, you're kind of like a bit of an oxymoron. See, this is concave, it's fluted. Yeah, so this is called cone fluting actually. Um, but yeah, that's fluting. Um, and pillar cutting is convex. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that deep dive into a little bit of my collection. Um, and I will put the references in the description below. And please remember to like and subscribe. Remember to do that. It's very important for my channel to get more people liking glass, um, get them dragged into our obsession. Um, and yeah so with that said thank you for watching and i hope you have a good night thank you good night